Okay, so let's just look at the socket script now. So that's kind of like your base connection, uh, just for sending and receiving messages. So this is the script here. Uh, I'm just going to start right from the top and go all the way through it. Uh, so system IO, uh, just for any input outputs. I don't think we use that in here. Uh, Unity engine, just for any Unity stuff. Uh, system collection, so any lists. Sometimes you might need those. Uh, then the Unity engine networking, that's going to enable a lot of these like connection config, and network transport ad host. Uh, a lot of that stuff is all in this namespace. So you're going to want to get that. And we're just going to need a binary formatter. So whenever you're sending messages in and out, you first have to convert it. And that's what that's going to do. Okay, so the script I've called sockets, uh, which is a, just a good name for it. You can call it whatever you want, obviously. Uh, and then I have this rabbit class. So what I end up doing is I keep this as clean as possible, uh, just down to bare bones. And then whenever I call a function, I'm going to write all those functions in another, uh, in another class. So in this case, I called it rabbit. So I just say my rabbit, and I'm going to call functions from that rather than writing them all in here. So these are all just going to be networking functions in this script. Uh, so we have our host ID. That's going to be the actual ID assigned to the server. Uh, our host port. So that's that port we've been using over and over. And we'll assign that down here in a second. And then you have the host address. So that's the actual IP address. And that's going to be based on your Google Cloud. So in, in both the client and the server version, uh, it's always going to be that Google Cloud IP address. And the connection ID, I'm not actually sure if the server uses this, but you're going to need it for the client. Uh, so then we have channels. So here these are just integers. Uh, based on how many channels you have, you're going to just add, add or remove channels here. And this is just the base integer, but we're going to actually see what those do later. So the buffer size, this is the uh, just shows how much data is coming in or out, which helps you process it so you know what size it is. Okay, so usually you make a function called initialize, and this is just going to set the terms of the conversation. So ba basically your server and your client both need to know uh, things like the port and the address, and then what channels you're communicating on. Uh, so that's going to be identical between the two, so it's easy for them to communicate. So the first thing we have is the port. Um, so again, just use that one you've been using um, in this tutorial the one that you've been opening all the firewalls for. Then we have that address. Uh, so you can go right to the Google Cloud and just copy paste that address. Uh, it should be a static IP by now. And then it's going to want a connection config. Uh, so this is basically just a list of all the different channels. And it's going to, there's different types of channels too. So basically what you're going to do is set up a whole bunch of different lines of communication and each one is going to have different terms. Uh, so some of them are going to be reliable, some are going to be reliable fragmented, uh, some can be like just fragmented. Uh, I just go to the Unity site and look them all up. It explains pretty good what they all do. But in a nutshell, reliable is going to make sure that message gets across, whereas something like fragmented is it's less concerned whether or not the message gets across. So let's say we do uh, channel zero, I make that reliable. That might be something like a login. If someone sends you a login, you want to make sure you get that information right. Whereas uh, reliable fragmented, maybe it's something like a movement. So you don't necessarily, uh, actually you'd probably set that to unreliable. But some, yeah, something like a movement where you're sending them many, many times a second and that information becomes outdated very fast. So if you sent uh, a movement now in two seconds from now, it doesn't matter what you sent. They want the most current information. Uh, so unreliable channels will just kind of drop older messages and stuff like that. So you're going to add as many of those as you need. Uh, as your game grows, you can always just add more. So just set up an integer here, uh, set the channel here, and just set that QoS type to whatever you want. Okay, so the top topology is going to take that configuration 
and it wants a number as well. So that's how many people can connect. Uh, I think I've just set that to 10 for now. And then we move on to our host ID. So this is going to use a network transport at host, which is basically just setting up the server. Um, and it's going to set the server to just an integer, which I think is usually zero. Um, so you're going to use the topology and the host port. So that's what that'll look like there. Uh, then we're going to call an awake function. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to call this function network transport uh, dot init. And that's basically going to spool up Unity's internal networking engine. Uh, so once that's running, then you can say initialize, which is this function that we created here. And it's going to set the terms of the conversation. So the networking spools up, uh, then you initialize the networking conversation. Okay, so now we'll just move down to the update function. Uh, this is just like awake, start, and update. These are base Unity functions. Uh, so how this is going to work is it's basically always listening for a Unity message. Uh, whenever it receives it, it's then going to process it. So this is kind of like your listener script. Um, the actual function is down here, so network transport dot receive. But these parameters here, you're going to declare, which are basically the um, the information on that message that's being sent. So who it's coming from, how big it is, all that stuff. So we have the receive host ID, which is the who that client thinks the host is. Uh, we have the receive connection ID. So that one's very important. That's who you're receiving the message from. So if you have to relay a message back, you're going to want that. Um, then we have the channel ID, so what channel it was sent over. We have the receive buffer, so this is the actual data. Um, you're going to have to convert it into an array of bytes and then back out again. But I'll show that in a second. Um, so basically that's going to be the information itself. And then the buffer and data size, so how big that array of bytes is. And then you're just going to have an error, which the function needs in case there's a problem. Okay, so it's going to call this um, network event type receive data equals network transport dot receive. Uh, that's just the syntax for it. And here are all the parameters uh, that we just set. So you're going to get this information as you receive it. And this is actually going to be a switch. So there's different types of information you can receive. Uh, so the first type of network event is going to be nothing. Uh, so just nothing happened. And then the second one is the connection event. So the client's actually going to have a function called connect, uh, which is going to establish a connection. So whenever that happens, you're just going to get, uh, it's going to go through this channel. And one thing you can do here is just say, I got a connection. And then you can just add the uh, the ID of who connected. Uh, so that's just going to log whenever someone connects for you. Okay, then you get a data event. So this is whenever someone actually sends a message. So first, that buffer size is going to equal the data size. So you're just saying, how big is this message that we're getting? Uh, and then you're going to receive it on a channel. So up here, you're going to get a channel. And I've said, if I receive this information on channel 1, I'm going to do this. Uh, so that's kind of how I do my logic is based on the channel. I'm going to process it differently. So if I receive on channel one, I'll do one thing. If I receive on channel two, I'll do something different. And that way you kind of, you can predetermine uh, what type of messages are going to be sent. So, you know, if it's on channel one, you're going to receive a login name and a login password, let's say. Uh, so then you can process a login name and password. If you receive on two, you know you're going to receive, let's say, a movement position. So you're going to process a movement position, uh, and so on and so forth. And then after that, we just have a disconnect event. So whenever there is a disconnection, uh, again, that's a client function. That's network transport dot disconnect. Or if they're actually cut off, it's just going to log that that connection is no longer available, and it's going to show the ID the person that disconnected. Uh, or you can access that, which I've done here, and just logged it out. So just a little bit more about this data event. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually call 
um, this rabbit class or really any other class and I'm going to process that externally. You could do it here. You could say uh, channel ID equals one and then you could just type out a whole bunch of stuff, do all this. But I find it's easier to make a function in another script, which is this rabbit script here. And then I'm just going to call that here. Uh, so I've called, I've made this function receive question and I'm just going to call that. So that function wants a connection ID and it wants the buffer. So it wants to know who it's getting the message from so it can send something back and it wants to know what the actual message is uh, so it can deserialize that and process it. But all that is actually going to happen in a different script. Uh, this is just where it receives the message and then it sends it off. And that is the server version of Sockets.